Okay, so in this video, we're going to look at how to level up during a game. So, so far, the app is set up so that we've got a ball sprite bouncing around on the edges, and a fly sprite, and a spider sprite. And we have the score set up, so we're getting points, and we want to now implement levels so that when we reach a certain threshold for how many points we have, we want the level to go up. So we'll start at level zero, and then based on the number of points that we get, we're going to move up in level, and then start to make things a little more difficult. So a uh, working version of what we have in the code right now is that uh, we have the ball bouncing around and it really isn't doing anything for score. And we aren't getting any score until the fly collides with the spider. And so when that event occurs, then we get 10 points. So right there, we've got 10 points. Now we don't have any way to control any of these things. They're just uh, moving and bouncing off the edges. So to be able to get the score to go up a little faster, I'm going to set up the fly so that I can fling it so that uh, we can force it to crash into the spider. And then we'll work on upping the levels. So back in the code, since I want to control the fly sprite, I'm going to click on the fly sprite to see the blocks that are available. And one of them is flung. So when the fly sprite is flung, and what I want it to do when it's flung is to change the heading to the direction that it was flung. So when this event occurs, all of these values are saved about that particular event, and one of which is the, the heading, the direction that it was moved or flung. So I'm going to set the fly sprite, set fly sprite heading two, and then these are all variables, so I'm just going to hover over here and get the heading of the direction that it was flung. So now if I test this out, I should be able to fling the, the fly and get its change its direction. I'm doing this on my phone rather than with the mouse because it's a lot easier to handle on here. So each time this happens, right, I'm able to get it to collide with the spider and increasing our score. So now that we have a way of controlling this and being able to easily up the score, I'm gonna go back and we're gonna figure out now how do we do a level based on the score. So instead of putting a lot more code in this collided with event where we're keeping score, because it's gonna get more complex, I'm going to create a procedure and we'll have everything that has to do with keeping our score in that procedure. So we're going to bundle our code into a separate procedural block. So I'm going to come over to procedures and grab a to-do procedure. And I'm going to just name it um, keep score since that's what it's going to do. And what do I want it to do? Well, basically what we have over in here where we're updating the score and putting it into the label. So I'm going to drag this over into keep score. And then in the fly sprite collided with, when it collides with something, we want it to do the keep score procedure. We want it to jump over here and then check the score. So we can go back into the procedure block and grab a call keep score block. Now we have an error and this is popping up because it says variable other is not bound in the current context, which means right here, it's like it doesn't know what other is. 
that's basically what that message is saying. And we have a red X over here that is helping you to see that that's where the problem is. So I'm going to dismiss this and for right now I'm going to pull this out so we don't keep getting that error message. Right, Every time it's colliding with something it's coming over here and trying to do this. So the problem is, I mean it worked while it was over here but then as soon as we separated it out it stopped working. And the problem is with get other. So over in here when it collides with something it's stored as other. But this is what's called a local variable, meaning other is only available inside this collided with event. So what we have to do is we have to get other to get from here into our keep score procedure. All right, so we need to get other over here. So the way that we do that is we can pass a piece of information from here into keep score. And we can mutate this using the little gear button here. So if I click on that, I'm just going to drag an input into the inputs block like this. And it automatically gives you a name. And X is not really all that descriptive. Let me just click off of here to get rid of that. It's not that descriptive. So I'm going to call it what collided with. Right, so I'm just making up that name, but it just kind of makes sense to me as this is the value of what was collided with. And then you can see over here is this updated to show that we need to pass an input over here. So what we want to pass is other, right? It's only available in here, but we want to get it over here. So other gets passed into keep score as what it collided with. And now, instead of other, let's see, can we, what it, we can change it to what it collided with. So now other starts over here, it gets passed into keep score, it becomes what it collided with, and then we can check to see if what it collided with was the spider sprite, then get 10 points. So let's just see if that is still working. So I'm going to reset this and we will get the fly to collide with the spider so then we can get points. Now if it collides with the red ball, let me get it up here to the red ball. My fling isn't working. Oh, there we go. So when it collides with the red ball, it, the score doesn't go up. So it only goes up when it hits the spider. So my score is still working. It's just working slightly different in here. So when the fly collides with something, it's going to do keep score. And then keep score is going to check to see if it was the spider. And if it is, add 10 points and show that in the score label. Now also to kind of keep things a little more organized, let's create another procedure that is going to check what level they should be. So I'm going to create another procedure in here and I'm going to call this check level. So then we can put everything in here, what we want it to do um, when it needs to check the level. So let me move this up a little bit. So once we have this, again, we have a procedure call. So after it does the score change, then we want it to come over here and check the level. So in here, we can create our if condition to check to see what the score is and then base the level on that score. So we'll start with a simple uh, if then block and we'll do three levels just to begin. So I'm going to have this if would be for level one and then an else if for level two 
and an LCIF for level three. And we're going to base this on score. So we'll start out with a math comparison block. And let's go, we'll just start from high to low. So we'll do maybe 50 since we're counting by tens up here. So if the score is greater than or equal to 50, so we want to get score. So we'll move that out of the way. So if score is greater than or equal to 50, then let's just change the text in the level label to see if that works. So we'll set level label text to, and then we need a text block, and we'll have it say level three. And then basically we can duplicate this. So if it's greater than or equal to, we'll say 30, then we'll change this to level two. And we'll do 20 since we're counting by tens. Now these are pretty short levels in here since we're counting by tens, but we want to have we want this to happen pretty quickly so that we can just test and verify that yeah it's working. Then we can always go back in here and change these values. So if the score is greater than or equal to 50, we're going to see level 3. If it's greater than or equal to 30, level 2, greater than or equal to 20, then level 1. So I'm going to come back here and let's test this out. Let me just reset. And so uh, I'm going to set up my reset. Okay, there it goes. So level two hits it again, get it back in here. Yep, it hits it again, it gets to level three. But I just noticed I need to set my reset button so that it changes this back to level zero. So I'm going to come in here and let's also set the level level text back to level zero. So now if I come back here, everything starts back at zero. And then, right, we got 10. And when it hits 20, then it should go up to level one. And then 30 should go to level two. 40, we should get it to 50, and that should bring us to level three. So then we have, we can at least see that, yes, we are getting into these if else if statements, and it is putting the proper level in on the label. So now the rest is up to you about what you want to do when you level up. Like you could do something in here sim uh, by simply changing the the speed of the fly sprite or making the fly let's make the fly smaller so that uh, it makes it harder to hit the spider target especially since right now the spider's not even moving so um, we can take the fly sprite it for level one. Let's make the fly sprite height and the fly sprite width. To something smaller than what it is. So uh, if you don't know how big your graphics are, then you can take your image, like I'm just going to download this to my computer, and uh, this opens up in, uh, on a Mac, opens up in preview, but you could open it up in an editor or, so we can just get properties. So if I do show inspector on my Mac, then I can see that it's 35 by 36 pixels, so almost 
um, square. So I could take this down instead of 35 by 35, I could make it 28 by 28. So now we can see how big the fly is right now. And when I reset it, it stays the same size, but then when we get to level one, it should get a little smaller. Yep, got a little smaller. All right, other ideas for things that you can do. If you get the spider to start moving around, when the level goes up, you could make the spider a little smaller, and maybe a little faster. Uh, changing background images so you could find an image so that it makes it harder to see the fly and the spider. So uh, you would just include the things that you want to change for each level in the then part. So this correlates to level one and then what you put in this then block correlates to level two and then this block for then correlates to level three. So hopefully this helps you get started with leveling up in some of your games in App Inventor.